This is the history of protest songs in the United States. Part 9. The 20th Century. In the 20th century, the Union Movement, the Great Depression, the Civil Rights Movement, and the war in Vietnam all inspired protest songs. 1970s, the Vietnam War, soul music. Machine Gun is a song written by American musician Jimi Hendrix and originally recorded by Band of Gypsies for their self-titled live album, 1970. It is a lengthy, loosely defined, jam-based protest of the Vietnam War and perhaps a broader comment on conflict of any kind. The Kent State shootings of May 4, 1970 amplified sentiment that was portrayed by the United States invasion of Cambodia and the Vietnam War in general, and protest songs about the Vietnam War continued to grow in popularity and frequency. There were anti-war songs such as Chicago's It Better End Soon, 1970, War 1969, by Edwin Starr, Ohio, 1970, by Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, and Bring the Boys Home, by Frida Payne, 1971. Another great influence on the anti-Vietnam War protest songs of the early 70s was the fact that this was the first generation where combat veterans were returning prior to the end of the war, and that even the veterans were protesting the war, as with the formation of the Vietnam Veterans Against the War, VVAW. Graham Nash wrote his O. Oh, Camille, the Winter Soldier, 1973, to tell the story of one member of VVAW, Scott Camille. Other notable anti-war songs of the time included Stevie Wonder's frank condemnation of Richard Nixon's Vietnam policies in his 1974 song, You Haven't Done Nothing. Protest singer and activist Baez dedicated the entire B-side of her album Where Are You Now, My Son. 1973, to recordings she had made of bombings while in Hanoi. Steely Dance, King of the World, on their 1973 album Countdown to Ecstasy joined the protest against nuclear war. There has been speculation that the Guess Who's anti-war protest song, American Woman, 1970, is addressed to a female U.S. Armed Forces recruiter by a draft dodger. While the subject of war continued to dominate the protest songs of the early 1970s, there were other issues addressed by bands of the time, such as Helen Reddy's feminist hit, I Am Woman, 1972, which became an anthem for the women's liberation movement. Dylan also made a brief return to protest music after some 12 years with Hurricane, 1975, which protested the imprisonment of Reuben, Hurricane, Carter as a result of alleged acts of racism and profiling against Carter, which Dylan describes as leading to a false trial and conviction. Don't worry if there's a hell below, we're all going to go, is a funk soul song originally recorded by Curtis Mayfield for his album Curtis, 1970. The song was meant to serve as a warning regarding the state of race relations and the tempest growing in America's inner cities. Soul music carried over into the early part of the 70s, in many ways taking over from folk music as one of the strongest voices of protest in American music, the most important of which being Marvin Gaye's 1971 protest album What's Going On, which included Inner City Blues, Mercy Mercy Me, The Ecology, and the title track. Another hugely influential protest album of the time was poet and musician Gil Scott Heron's Small Talk at 125th and Lennox, which contained the oft-referenced protest song. The revolution will not be televised. The album's 15 tracks dealt with myriad themes, 
protesting the superficiality of television and mass consumerism, the hypocrisy of some would-be black revolutionaries, white middle-class ignorance of the difficulties faced by inner-city residents, and fear of homosexuals.